Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today we're going to do like um, <clears throat> what I'm going to call reality off the cuff number one, which is I'm just going to like talk about whatever. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes when, when I'm thinking about this idea that, that we don't have a free will, that it's an illusion and everything is like faded, I mean, it's, it's, it's sometimes the most amazing, the most wonderful when I'm just like, kind of like, you know, just think about, thinking about it impromptu, you know, without a prepared script and all. So, so that's what we're going to do this, this, uh, for this episode. All right. Um, it's, it would change the world. It would absolutely change the world for, um, for everyone to understand that, that um, free will is an illusion. For everyone to understand that that everything that we do is faded, that, that we're just like actors, you know, without, without even the, the ability to interpret our roles. It would change the world because like, and you want to know something, all right, I have, I have understood this for several decades at least, you know, definitely since the 80s, probably maybe before. And, um, and it's one thing to kind of like to intellectually understand how, you know, cause and effect prohibit free will and just the fact that we have an unconscious makes free will impossible. It's one thing to understand that, but it's another thing to kind of like integrate that understanding into your everyday life. And, and what's been very cool recently is like, you know, for a while I was actually trying to... Um, to hasten that integration. I, was, I would like get um, clips of my previous shows, you know, convert them into an MP3 format, put them into my player, and just listen to them, you know, just like so I could like remind myself of all this. And I still do that uh, sometimes, but, but I'm finding for some reason that, um, that actually this integration is beginning to happen naturally, that um, the way it works is like, Somebody in my life invariably will do something that that I didn't like, you know, whatever that I found some kind of objection to, and and you know, naturally, when when that happens with us, we we um, will blame the person. Well, we might feel angry with the person, or just like want to condemn the person in some way, feel feel bad badly toward the person feel badly toward the relation and so like you know what's happening recently is like it's not completely automatic but i'm finding that much much sooner i'm i'm kind of like um automat well i'm kind of um realizing you know that 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 whatever they did isn't up to them. I mean, and it's the coolest thing in the world because, um, you know, again, when, when we have people that are, that are in our life, our friends, you know, um, various people, we, we do not, it's, we, you know, we absolutely don't want to be kind of like in conflict with them. We don't want to blame them. We don't want them to blame us. We want like our relationships to be as harmonious as possible. And, um, and it is so cool that, you know, it's like, you know, somebody will say something, do something, whatever, and I'll start thinking, geez, you know, I'll start blaming them. And then, you know, well, you know, wait a minute. I shouldn't be angry at this person. This person had absolutely no choice but to do what they did. And I'm telling you, when that happens, um, it's just like my experience recently is that, like, you know, the anger, the, the condemnation and all just, just melts. I mean, you know, I tend to like to be a rational person. And when, if something doesn't make sense, I just, you know, it's harder for me to like go with it. So when it doesn't make sense to blame other people for the way they are, that's a great feeling. That's a very cool feeling. And naturally with myself, I mean, because like I'll make mistakes. I won't be as good a person as I would want to be or I won't like do things as well as I would want to whatever but but I you know I'm getting better well I actually I, I haven't detected that all that much you know with myself and all but but certainly in principle you know like to the extent that I don't blame myself for whatever you know I, I think maybe it is my, my natural kind of like understanding that um 
that you know I can like myself better, and and you know it's it's just very important to like oneself. Um, so yeah, so you know what happens is as you explore this, as you you know, if you want to kind of like adopt a causal will perspective, you know, abandon, transcend, overcome your your free will perspective, talk about it with people. You know, if you can explain to another person why they don't have a free will, you're going to understand it a lot more clearly. Every time you explain it, because like you know, people will come up with um, different different statements. For example, you'll say, um, you'll say to somebody, you don't have a free will, and they'll say, what are you talking about? I make choices all the time. And the answer to something like that is, sure, we all make choices, but that's not the question. <laughs> the question is whether the choices are free of factors that we're not in control of. You know, that's what a free will def you know, technically means. So, so again, there are ways um, when, you, when you do explain this to others, when you think about it, you, you just like better and better understand um, the true nature of our human reality, and, and you, you know, apply it to your own life. You know, especially in politics. God, I, I was in politics for you know about four years or so, and I'm glad I'm not really in it anymore because it's like politics. Well, politics is like, it's like you could know, like like for example, when I was in it, I would know that a certain person, a certain party, really wasn't responsible for whatever it is that I was going to like attack them on, whatever, because that's what politics is so much about. But then, you know, like, I, you know, but the nature of politics is to win. And so that's why, you know, I found it kind of like very, very frustrating because, you, you know, you'd be blaming people and, and parties for things you, you, you know, you absolutely knew they couldn't um, but do. Um, but um, all right, so like, what else? Um, yeah, um, this, I think this issue is, is going to take off relatively soon. Um, I did, uh, I mentioned this on a previous show, the, there's a sign, there's a science magazine called New Scientist, and it's a weekly, you know, there's other science magazines like, um, Amer Scientific American, um, Scientific American Mind, Psychology Today, you know, the deal with the human mind often. But this one's a weekly. It's, it's British-based. Um, you get it on the web. Go to newscientist.com, I think. And for their April 26th through, um, no, April 16th through 22nd issue, they actually had a cover story, an actual cover story on, um, on free will as an illusion. I mean, like, this is probably the first time ever that the, the topic has um, risen to, to be a cover story on any magazine, you know, um, because it's only beginning to get into the, the public consciousness, you know, this whole question. But the, the cool thing about this article is that um, sometimes in the past, magazines would, would present the... Um, the matter is an open question, as if, you know, as if maybe there can be free will, you know, but, but our science, our understanding, the evidence has progressed to the point that that's not any longer, um, you know, an honest um, evaluation of, 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 of the matter, you know, so, so the, the, the title of this particular cover story was Free Will the illusion we can't live without. You know, so it's, it's basically conceding that free will is an illusion, and then it's going into kind of like some of the um, implications of that. I'm going to eventually do a show on that um, because, you know, some of the um, studies that have, they've been kind of like conducting to... Some, some people are feel that it's better that we have the illusion of free will than we have the truth that we don't. But again, I, I found various flaws in, in their basic premises and methodology that I'll go into to later. But, but the cool thing is that, um, that it's out there, that it's, it's you know, it's um, beginning to really, um, you know, find itself in, in, in the public consciousness. Okay, what else? So, um, one thing's cool. I mean, I, I guess I can talk about whatever I want. <laughs> I, mean, 
I'm, I, um, this morning, this morning I decided to, um, to start writing a book on this because um, I don't know if you've tried to go on Amazon or on the internet to find books on free will determinism, but one, there are relatively few. Two, almost all of them are written by people who mistakenly believe we have free will. You know, you can't blame them, but they get it wrong. And, and three, you know, of like there's several, there's a couple of books that I'm familiar with um, by philosophers. Like there's this one guy, Dirk Paraboom, um, I think he's at Cornell, and he wrote a book, I think titled Living Without Free Will, that he kind of like, in the book he demonstrates, he explains why free will is impossible. Then he explains how it's not the end of the world that it's impossible, that, you know, we, we can still love each other and still, you know, have wonderful experiences our, in our life nonetheless. But the thing is he charges, what, like about, I don't know, $40, $50 for the book, something like that. And then there's this other guy, um, Saul Smolansky, who wrote a book, um, I forget what it's called. It may be The Illusion of Free Will, I'm not sure. But um, he's got a very interesting take. He, and again, he, he charges 40, 50, I don't know, something like that. But um, his take is that he understands that, that free will is impossible, that, you know, that, you know it's just like an, it's an illusion, you know. Not causality, the fact that we have an unconscious that just, it's just like free will has to be impossible. He understands that completely. But his take is that, we shouldn't we shouldn't tell people this <laughs> that, that we that like you know his he's got you know it's kind of like a pessimistic um perspective prediction he says that well if, if everybody would understand the true nature of our will that, that free will is an illusion and we're really ultimately not responsible for what we do then like you know civilization is going to collapse and um that's the basic premise and in fairness in fairness to him i i've only skimmed through his book. I haven't read it completely, so, um, but, but, you know, the gist, the gist um, doesn't seem to, to be warranted. I, I, I mean, firstly, because we're, we're hedonic creatures. We're, we seek pleasure and avoid pain. So, like, if somebody is trying to, um, to claim, well, you know, I can do whatever I want because you can't blame me because I don't have a free will, I mean, are we really going to allow a person to get away with that? No, because, like, we don't want people impinging upon, upon our happiness. And um, now, having said that, the, the reason this is so important is because, like, it depends, you know, it's a matter of how we treat the person. From the free will perspective, somebody does something wrong, they're evil, they're bad, they should be punished. Um, we don't see them favorably whereas like you know to the extent that we understand that whoever did whatever they did was absolutely compelled it wasn't up to them in any sense then yeah if, if like if they're impinging on our happiness our welfare or the welfare of others we may need to take measures we may need to separate them we may need to do whatever but the key thing is we would do this in a far more compassionate way. Um, you know, we wouldn't be blaming them. We'd, we'd say to them, like, you know, let's say there was a police officer or a counselor or a judge or someone um, talking to this person who'd done something wrong or talking about the person. You know, they'd be saying, listen, we understand that, um, that you were absolutely compelled to do what you did. We don't blame you. You know, you're just as innocent as, as any one of us. Um, but, you know, the thing is that we can't, you know, allow you to do whatever it is you've been doing that, that you know, impinges upon the rights and, and happiness and welfare of others. And see, when, when you take that kind of perspective, when, when, you, when you treat a person who's done something wrong in that way, Firstly, they won't feel defensive, okay? They won't, they won't feel wrongly criminalized because, you know, from the free will perspective, it would seem right to, to indict them, condemn them. But, you know, from the real, from the reality, it, it is wrong. So they wouldn't feel wrongly um, persecuted. 
Um, and I think maybe more importantly, a lot of times we do what we do because of the kind of self-conception that we have. In other words, if let's say a, a young kid starts doing things wrong and you know all of a sudden society labels them a juvenile delinquent or um, you know or sends them to jail now they're they've, they're they're a felon or a, you know they've committed a misdemeanor or whatever who knows but what happens when you do that especially with young kids but certainly with adults is like they begin to um, to kind of like accept that self-image you know to they they say well you know these people, this, this judge, this society, these police people, whatever, they, they apparently know better than, than I, they, you know, and they feel I'm this kind of person, so I must be, you know? It's kind of like we have this kind of like, um, you know, submission to authority. And the problem is that like with that kind of um, perspective, that would like encourage, you know, um, you know, more of the same kind of behavior. And the person will say, will say to themselves, well, I'm just like, I'm just bad, you know. Um, they're saying it, you know. And that's not good. That's not good. So whereas like, you know, with, with a causal world perspective, you know, you, you, it would be, like I said before, it would be the exact opposite. It's like you're saying to the person, listen, if we understand it's not your fault what you did. <coughs> we don't blame you, but, you know, just for the sake of your well-being and the well-being of others, we have to take certain measures. It would all be done so much more compassionately, with, with so much more understanding. Okay, um, let's see. Now, why do we, um, <coughs> why do we kind of like hold so tenaciously to this belief that that we have a free will? Um, one, one very possible, very strong reason may be um, that in certain religions that, you know, the, the, the basic idea is that like if you go along with the religion, with the teachings, your likelihood of getting into heaven is much greater than if you don't. So like it could be in the, in the minds of a lot of people, they say to themselves, well, if I don't believe in free will, you know, yeah, um, I'm putting myself at risk. Um, that may explain it, but I, I have a feeling that um, that more fundamentally the reason why people cling to the belief is because um, they've never really explored it. You know, I mean, it's kind of an irony. It's interesting that in school, you know, basic biology, basic psychology, human behavior is a product of nature and nurture of heredity and environment. That's what we learn. That's what we all learn. This is not in dispute. This is basic biological, psychological science. And, and, but for whatever reason, we ne never make the connection. We never make the connection that, well, if our behavior is completely as a result of environment and heredity, then it can't be a result of this notion of free will. You know, if, if our past in combination with our genes is deciding everything we do, that has no room for free will. And um, so, yeah, so that may be a reason. Now, I think, you know, I'm, I'm trying to like, I'm tr trying to promote the idea that the world would be much better if we, um, if we gave up this illusion to the extent we gave up the illusion. And I think that's probably going to be something that I should focus on uh, substantially because like, you know, I, I run a meetup in Manhattan once a month. It's called Exploring the, the Illusion of Free Will. Check it out on the, um, on the web. And incidentally, um, check out this show's website, causalconsciousness.com. I've got all the shows up there, you know, and then there's a, a lot of clips on YouTube. Again, Exploring the Illusion of Free Will in quotes. But, um, but yeah, people, people need, I think, to understand um, what the benefit is of, of, of understanding our wills as causal. People need to, to have confidence that, um, that abandoning the, the illusion of free will is not going to um, threaten their, their, um, their lives, you know, what, what they value. Um, I think what 
in, in terms of the kind of shift in consciousness that, that is necessary is that um, a lot of times we like to take pride in what we do. Whenever we do anything well, you know, we, we really like to, um, to feel good that we did this. And, you know, under a causal will perspective, that's not really, really so possible. I mean, within religion, uh, you, you have, you know, we, we uh, uh, religious teaching is like when we do things right, when things go well, we're supposed to thank God. We're supposed to feel grateful and not, you know, that it was God that allowed us to do that. And that's, that's really the, the perspective that we would have to take across the board about anything we do, that um, to be grateful, we're lucky. We do something right, we get rewarded, we have a certain talent and ability. We didn't create ourselves. We didn't give ourselves those qualities to be able to, um, to do what we did successfully. This is, these are all gifts of, of fate. Um, so yes, I think that um, that understanding. I guess I guess maybe like understanding that um, that nonetheless, even though we're not the decision making part of, let's say, God, that we are a part of God. Because you know the idea is we're all one. You know that's kind of like a Buddhist idea. I think it's probably it makes a lot of sense. I mean, there's no physical division between us and the rest of the universe. Um, but so if we, if we adopt the understanding that, all right, fine, we're not the decision-making part of this God or universe, but we are a part of it, so that God is manifesting God's will through us, I think that may help people to, uh, to much more readily accept, you know, the, the reality of our causal will. And, uh, and again, you know, like conversely, we do things wrong. We do do things wrong a lot, and you know we feel guilty. You know, I mean, I I'm not a parent, but I could imagine a lot of parents. I can remember my parents. You know, they would um. They would worry about you know doing the right thing for my brothers and me, and um. And I guess a lot of parents sometimes maybe might feel guilty about maybe not having been able to do enough for their kids, not being able to protect them from whatever. And um, so, you know, I mean, from that perspective, I mean, I think understanding that, that what we do is really not up to us would, would spare us, spare people in general, from, from punishing ourselves. You know, because a lot of times with guilt, guilt is like, guilt can be, can take the form of conscience. It, it can tell us, you know, like, well, we've done something wrong. And fine, once we have that understanding, we know that in the future we will do our best to not do that wrong again. But, but guilt can also take the form of self-punishment, and that's what's um, so harmful. You have a lot of people that you know, are doing the best they can, they're, they're, they're doing what they can, as much as they can, and they're not in control of, 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 of things, even, even of how well they do what, what they do. So certainly it just makes no sense. It's kind of abusive to, uh, to blame and condemn oneself for what one isn't in control of. Okay, um, so what else? Um, yeah, just the idea, the, the world needs something really new. Climate change. All right, I like to, I like to um, present a, some science every now, now and then. When, when An Inconvenient Truth came out in 2006, I think, a year after that, there was a report by the intergovernment Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is a UN-based organization that includes about at least 3,000 scientists from over 100 countries, and they are the authoritative body, authoritative. They don't conduct science, but they evaluate all the science on climate that's been conducted throughout the world, and, and then they reach their conclusions. Now, um, so in, in 2007, they um, their understanding was that in order to avoid catastrophic consequences, um, we have to be below 450 parts per million of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere by 2050. Okay. Um, now, five years later, four years later, um, 
it turns out that that estimate was actually um, extremely optimistic, that actually a more accurate measure of the number we have to remain below is 350 parts per million. And the problem with that is that we're already at 387 or so parts per million. And um, so you, you can see that you know, we would have to reduce our, w the world is going to have to go through a monumental change to address climate change, to just to survive it, to, you know, so that civilization does not collapse. And to the extent that we can overcome this delusion of free will, we will not be busy blaming ourselves and each other for what happened. You know, uh, when we're not fighting each other, when we're not accusing each other, you know, then then I think we'd be on the same side to be able to address the um, the problem because it is so monumental. It's going to need that level of cooperation. Um, and you know that that just reminds me. That's actually the the basic. Um, value of understanding that our wills are causal. To the extent that we believe in a free will, we say that, well, you know, it's us versus them. But um, when we understand that it's a causal, we have a causal will, it's like all of us versus whatever it is that it's making, you know, that, that, is, that we're like, you know, objection, objecting to, but it's not about us anymore. You know, we're on the same side. Okay, so like, I'm running out of time. This has been good. I got to do this. Um, more often because like yeah yeah definitely because i <laughs> all right so anyway i hope you enjoyed the show and um i'm going to continue to um explain in various other ways why we don't have a free will i'm going to like you know present the arguments for free will and refute them and um it should be good okay <laughs> have a great day